Hello again, Stephen. We are in the middle of a pandemic right now with the coronavirus. I'm recording this video on April 5th around 7 p.m. And as of right now, there's been about 1.2 million cases worldwide with about 330,000 cases of COVID-19 in the US. And I am on the front lines of this pandemic. I'm biased, I work in the emergency room as a nurse, so I tend to think of the emergency room as the front lines of the front lines, but I'm currently working a contract in Maryland right now, and it's not Seattle, it's not New York, and it's not New Orleans. That is to say that basically while I am on the front lines of this pandemic, I am very aware of the fact that my situation could be so much worse than it is right now. And I'm not gonna be using this video to really talk about the coronavirus, how it's affecting our country or how it's affecting the world. I'm not gonna be giving advice on what you should be doing to combat the coronavirus. There are so many resources out there already that can provide you so much better information than I ever could. So today, Stephen, all I'm really doing is just kind of checking in, giving you kind of an update of how things are going here and what it's like to be working in the emergency room while all this is going on. So first of all, what is the attitude in the emergency room right now? It's kind of a mix of doing business as usual with a lot more layers of protection and a mixture of fear as well, which I'll expand on in a second. Business as usual, because while we were having a bunch of patients come in that were concerned could be a positive coronavirus case, we are also having our patients coming in just like usual. So we have to treat our usual patients, we have to treat the coronavirus patients, and somehow try not to cross-contaminate the two. And then, like I said, there's an element of fear in all of this, not necessarily fear of I'm scared to go to work. It's more of a fear of being overly concerned and taking extra precautions to make sure that we don't spread the virus ourselves and that we don't bring the virus home to our families. And there also is an element of fear just based on the fact that the information changes so frequently and how we're dealing with this virus changes such on a daily basis. That confusion creates an element of we don't know really what we're doing and this changes so frequently that are we really getting the best information because maybe we're going to be doing something different tomorrow than we're doing today. So just to kind of expand on that, let's go through kind of a quick timeline of what it's been like at my hospital. So when this first started breaking out, our hospital just told us to wear regular masks around these patients. That only lasted a couple of days and then the CDC guidelines came out saying that these patients need to be placed on both airborne and contact precautions. Airborne meaning that you need to wear some sort of respirator around these patients, whether it's an N95 mask or a paper hood, and then contact precautions meaning you just need to wear a you know, gown when you go into the room. That lasted maybe four or five days and then our hospital realized how quickly we were going through N95 masks doing that method. So they switched back to saying, you need to wear a gown around these patients, you need to wear eye protection around these patients, but unless they are receiving some sort of aerosolized treatment like an albuterol nebulizer, or if they're on high flow oxygen or a BiPAP, in those situations, you would wear a respirator around them. Otherwise, just wear a regular surgical mask around these patients. Also, at this time, our hospital said that all employees need to wear a mask at all times while they're in the hospital. That lasts for about two days. We were blowing through masks like crazy, so the hospital changed it and said, you don't have to wear a mask at work anymore. We were obviously concerned for our safety, so we continued to wear masks all the time while we were at work. And then a couple days later, they said, look, you need to stop wearing masks if you're not in a patient room because we're going through masks so quickly. About a week and a half after that, they said, okay, once again, employees are now recommended to wear masks at all time while they're at work. In fact, they're handing out masks once you enter my hospital right now. They also transitioned to saying that you need to be wearing a respirator mask at all time when you're around any kind of potential coronavirus case. So this time in my hospital, if you have a patient that's been labeled as a PUI, patient or person under investigation, this just means somebody who is exhibiting symptoms concerning the coronavirus, whenever you enter that room, you need to have a gown on, you need to have a respirator mask on, you need to have a regular mask over that respirator so that you can then reuse that respirator and it doesn't come in contact contact with anything and you have to wear eye protection. Like I said, it's, everything is just changing so rapidly that it changes from a day-to-day -day basis exactly what we're doing to protect ourselves from this virus. And then lastly, one of the biggest things, I think this is one of the biggest things because this like combats every ER nurse's mindset out there, is the phrase, there is no emergency in a pandemic. What that means is if you have a critical situation in the emergency room, whether somebody comes in cardiac arrest or somebody's screaming, help, we need help in here, the typical mindset for an ER nurse would be to drop everything, run into the room, and help help that patient. Now we have to change our way of thinking and approach this with a mindset of we can't have 12 people rushing into this room to help because that patient could be COVID positive and now you have just infected 12 people because they didn't take the time to put on the proper protective equipment. So when a patient comes in critically ill, we have to take a moment, put on all of the protective gear necessary, and then keep only minimal staff at the bedside. It's, it's just a drastic change in the mindset that's ingrained in us as an emergency room nurse. Like I said, I'm working in Maryland right now and while we are seeing cases and while we are dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, this area has not hit the surge yet that has hit other areas of the country. That's just a quick little update for you, Stephen. We were doing okay. Nobody in our house is symptomatic. Stephen, I hope that you and Harvey stay safe in Florida. I hope that things start to improve for your business, having to do all this telehealth and working from home. But as always, Stephen, I selfishly hope that you make a video and post it on here soon. But if not, I will see you in two weeks. In the meantime, I will talk to you later.